<laughs> Funk Flex, I'm here. So, New York, I want to tell you how all of this kind of transpired. Because once again, what I say is you can have an opinion. And everyone should be able to have an opinion. That doesn't make you a hater. And I'm gonna, that's, that's my motto tonight. But, you know, it's okay, though. I can have an opinion as well. These are people with opinions. Now, so New York, I don't know where to start. Let me start first earlier with, like, earlier this week, I gave a couple comments. I big this man up tremendously. In, 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 in it. And I'm going to get back to a little of that too So you have a good understanding of it But And then My friend You know Joey he's my friend Yes And I know what he's put in In the music business How long he's been in What he's done So I defended him Of course That's what friends do So I guess in doing that He got offended But I should have called him Or come up to the show He didn't call anybody When he's talking about anybody So I gave my opinion What shocked him Is he didn't think I was going to jump in on that But nah I'm going to jump in So I gave my opinion So we here I didn't put the audio online Nope Right out of, And everybody was asking Out of respect You know what I respect the dude I just want to say What I want to say We kept it moving Oh but it's about Let me come up First of all, fam, what are you coming up for? This ain't 1998. When you're in the music business, we'll have you come up. Right now, stick to artwork. Isn't that what he's doing? Artwork and clothing and slippers. Do that. That's all you. That's your lane. Let me do this music thing up here. I got this. Anyway, so just to give you a good description, New York, I know like in the last couple of years, you always see like little things about the Bach and this and Jay and all different people. Let me tell you about this guy. This guy right here was instrumental in the music business. I'm going to tell you why. Because some of this is going to be a repeat from earlier this week. But when Bad Boy was in this town, scorching hot. I mean scorching, running the city. This guy, Dame Dash, understood how to bring his brand through and make his brand matter during a time when it was just unheard of. Bad Boy was smoking hot. And I commend him for that. Not only that, I'm going to tell you, New York, me personally, my knowing of Jay-Z is first from Irv Gotti, because Irv Gotti was the one who brought me Ain't No. And he said, hey, they want to get you this record. And I know you're playing the tunnel, but I want to get you to clean. And then I met Dame. And I'm going to tell you something, New York. When this guy's passionate, I mean, he is passionate about his music. He's always passionate about Jake. Always passionate about every artist on the label. And I respected that. No, Rockefeller didn't give me any money to play nothing. Because I always had paper. Nice try. Anyway, <sighs> so as we move on, so then now I'm going to tell you another story, New York, and I haven't told a lot of people when I wanted to branch out and start my own office and my own like kind of business and kind of start managing a couple things myself. I went to an interview, not even an interview. I went to hang out at Rockefeller Records and it was something we were going to do on TV and Dame, Dame was there, mm -hmm. but I think Jay was late, or he may not even ever showed up, or something had happened. But Dame showed me around the office. So New York, let me tell you what he showed me. He showed me all the different rooms in the office. And he was just talking like, yeah, we do the artwork here, and we do, this is where we run the tour. And we, I said, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I said, what do you mean you run the tour? And everything that he says, yeah, we run the tour here. We we got the TVs and the Lexus. We go out in the college. You no, know, he was explaining the whole structure. And he had an office, and I don't I don't think he had overhead yet, because I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> but and this is a this is of course I guess before the what are the vultures he calls them? Culture vultures. Yeah, before the culture vultures. So <clears throat> so they doing their thing. But I learned a lot being at office because I saw that they did everything themselves. And I not only did I, I used a lot that I learned that day, not only in opening my office, but when I was putting out my own albums. 
myself i was like yo i'm gonna go in and i remember seeing that in that rockefeller office dame was showing me he was doing it i'm gonna do it so when i tell you new york i respect this dude because i so need that to be understood what he laid down what he did all the different things that he did all things and, and it's his passion for the music but and you knew the butt was coming new york Pause. <laughs> now, New York, for some reason, this dude, the culture vultures, like, I, what is that? People who are not of his color that are capitalizing on the culture? Is that what is, he's being said? Capitalizing on the culture? Let me tell you something. And let me break this down for you about the culture. New York City, I'm going to tell you about this Rockefeller Records because I watched it. Why? Because it's interesting and they put out good music. And there's a lot of music that I like. Don't try to ever say you ever paid me to play rec. Nice truck. Matter of fact, I could tell a story of somebody that was next to me. You was offering paper to to get me to play rec. Do you remember that conversation What my man told you? I'm just sharing stories today because we're going to share a lot. Now, so New York, I remember Rockefeller, not even, it may not have, Jay had a record on Payday. I don't even know if that was the first, nah, he was probably on, nah, he was probably on, uh, what's the one, uh, Get Open, Atlantic, he was on that group, with that group. I think that was Ski, that had to be like 92, 91, whatever that was. No, that didn't come yet. Right, I think it was Payday and that was his first re record or second record and after that, after that, New York City, they was on Freeze Records. You want to know what Freeze Records it was in New York? That was Will Sokoloff, who used to do sleeping bag records. Understand where I'm going with this story. Right? They was running around with their music as they should and they singles. And I don't remember if the album came out, but I remember Ain't No with Foxy Brown, was cranking. They were still independent. And this guy talks about culture vulture. But New York City, I was there. If you only four years in the game or you only, you only been on your website about three years, sometimes you believe foolishness like this. People trying to pit people against each other because of their color. That's what's happening here. Yeah, it happened to be my friend, but he's pitting people against it for their color. Now they're culture vultures. But I'm going to tell you something. When that ain't no with Foxy Brown, right, that single, it would have died out here if Def Jam Records didn't pick it up. What happened was there was a, what's that? There was a movie soundtrack that Nutty Professor that picked up that single and shot that video. I remember it clearly. Remember when the culture vulture cut you that check? New York City, I don't own stock in Def Jam. I don't know Lior. I've never been in none of his barbecues. I'm telling you what this is because I've been in the game. And a lot of people can't comment on this. And that's what this cornball's banking on that nobody can comment on because they don't know. I know. Anyway, so goes over the Def Jam records. Because fam, if that ain't no didn't get picked up by Def Jam, you would have been Boo Boo Records. Okay, then now Jay starts making some albums, right? Is that is that how it worked? Am yeah. I am yeah. I missing anything? No, no, that's right. The culture vulture cuts you a check. Now, let me tell you, New York City, I want to explain the music business to you because a lot of people like to talk but not explain the music business, okay? I'm going to tell you, when you get signed to a, when, when your label situations get signed, let me tell you how that was working back then in the 90s, the late 90s. He was getting probably $2 million to $3 million in overhead for his label. He was getting million-dollar video budgets, he was getting million dollar album budgets. You hear me? You count the years and you count the different artists in the albums. The culture vulture cut him those checks. Who put a gun? Who told me that? Oh, I don't want to blow him up. 
<laughs> Who put a gun to his head to sign those deals? New York City, everybody would have took those deals. And he took them. He was successful at it. He's a sore winner. You hear what I'm saying, New York? I ain't up here to, like, as you notice, I'm not giving any dirt on rock or who didn't like who. I don't care about none. I'm giving you the facts. I'm giving you what I know as the music business. Remember the cakeaholic? Is that what he called himself? Yeah, yeah. Listen to me, B. The culture vulture allowed you to call yourself the cakeaholic. Once again, I don't own stock in Def Jam. I've probably been up there in New York. Oh, man, I've been up there a couple times. I had an album on there. Okay, okay. Yeah, I've been up there a couple times. All right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been up there a couple times. All right, so back to the story. So, so this guy gets money off of that. He sells out. He has plaques on the wall, right? Yeah. What about Rockaware? When they cut you that check to buy you out, was that from a culture vulture? I'm just understanding. You spent it, though, right? Now, now, let me tell you what this culture vulture thing he's trying to say, so I want to be so specific. Now, let me tell you, the way labels work in New York, you're a major label. You're Atlantic, you're Def Jam, you're whoever you are, Arista. Now, the purpose of a guy like Lior or Russell Simmons is to bring in the people who understand the culture. Hence, rest in peace, Chris Lighty. Hence, Irv Gotti. Hence, D and Y with DMX. Hence, Dame Dash, Rockefeller. That's the whole thing, and you give them imprints. New York City, you know, you want to know why you know that logo when you see it? Because Def Jam Records let that logo live. Because there was a lot of labels. You remember how small that bad boy label was on that Arista, right? Clive kept it small. That logo was big on there. Russell Simmons understood that. And Russell Simmons paved the way for this game. A culture vulture. That is, let me tell you, people use that word and to pit people of color against each other because they don't want to look in the mirror and face the mistakes that they made. I'm keeping it 100 today. You think Armandale Vodka were those culture vultures cutting you that check when you were spending it? You want to come up here and debate. You want to come up here and twist the truth. I know what you are. You had your opinion. Everybody let you, let you have your opinion. I got mine. Don't be mad because I'm a bigger on a bigger platform. Don't be mad because I'm still current and you're not. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad because I took up for my friend. That's what it is because you was trying to box them in. You know they're not going to say nothing to you but me. I'm going to say something to you. Back to the Def Jam breakdown. You thought I forgot? When you going to get Beans is $11 million for state property that you didn't give him yet, that he was vocal about him not getting it? Is that a culture vulture? What about currency? You seem to quote that on your Instagram. What about the, yo, let me tell you something, New York. This dude, because he's out here screaming and complaining about them. You did it to yourself. But New York City, you listen to me. This dude had a Dame Dash Entertainment. What was that? He had another label deal. Am I lying? Nope. Did this guy have another label deal after The Rock? Yep. And he signed Currency to it, right? Yep. Currency was a, Currency put out two albums. You didn't pay Currency on one song, B. Who's the culture vulture? You know why you didn't pay him? Because you didn't understand how digital he was. You didn't see it because you didn't have a computer. You didn't see it. You weren't on the gram. You weren't on Twitter. Yo, you came out of nowhere. You know when somebody's not on Twitter, New York, when people can create 100 fake pages of you, you didn't even know they were creating 100 fake pages because you weren't on. Man. You were in a you were in a slipper, <laughs> you were in a, a, a slipper a slipper art coma. New York City, I'm keeping it so 100 today.
So, we talked about state property, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me get to my, because I have notes on this. Now, New York, this guy, he complains about anybody next to Hove. This guy's this, this guy's that. New York City, let me tell you something. Me, as Flex, I wouldn't have been stupid enough or dumb enough or full of myself enough to let Lior, Desiree, Steve Stout, or OG Wan get that close to him. And John Manili, sorry. I wouldn't have been dumb enough. And what are you mad at? Because they helped the dude? Because they helped him get further? Because B, let me tell you what you were doing. Do we have that video on the site? It's on the site. It's on the site? It's on the site. Do you have it? It's on the site? It's in the, the video? It's the recent Dame Death. New York City. This guy wonders why he's blackballed from the music business. I don't I don't care saying it. I mean, like the I like him. I mean, but but I'm gonna tell you something though. And I'm a hundred one hundred with you, New York. I respect there's nothing, and it's kind of why I'm only on this like a couple years later and I get I I so respect, man. How he, how he stood for Jay. Like, I so respect it. Like, like I so respect that New York because I see so many sidewinders and so many different people and so many suckers. So I, I respect that about him so much, man, that he stood, he stood for him. New York City, let me tell you, I know everybody knows Jay now as Mr. Personable. It's not what it was. Dame was that, that fist to the face. He was that energy. He was that, Joe, my man is nice. He's the best. My man is nice. He's the best. And New York, it took me a minute to believe. I'm not going to lie. But I started to. And I understand that. Like, man, like, B, I get it. Like, you did your thing. Like, the whole, like, you tan people down now. Like, that's called a sore winner. That's the definition of that. A couple dudes get next to him, and it's like this guy. You let that. You was self-destructing. You was. What's that video called? What's the video he on? The last days of the rock. Yeah. The last days of the rock. This guy's in a marketing meeting in New York, screaming and yelling at like fifteen people. You want me, New York City? I'm gonna break something down to you. So real about that tape. He's complaining about people doing something without Jay being there or not him being there, right? That, that they didn't tell him in advance. That they didn't tell him in advance. New York City, I come from the city. I know what the music game is. I'm still in it because I'm hot. I know how to throw that in. New York City, you know why the reason he was getting so angry in that meeting? Because Jay had already deaded him. He already knew that the relationship was in turmoil. Because then you try to grab onto it and come into a meeting and talk up for a dude. They're not looking at you and talking to you because they know you're finished already. They didn't honor you in that meeting. You were done already. I'm breaking the tape down for you, New York. Done. He was done already. Decoding it. Yeah, I'm decoding it. No one's talking or looking at you because they don't care. Like, look, if, cause if you was still that dude, they'd have been like, all right, yo, hey, hey man, sorry, 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 sorry. What was making them more angry is they were ignoring him. <laughs> yeah. Fam, listen to me. The music business changed. Cause I, I commend you. I commend you for that. And the way, but the game changed. Just like I changed. Everyone, well, not everybody, but for me to still say hot, I changed. My technique is different. You see how different this is? The way I'm tearing you down right now, it's a different technique. I acquired this over the years. I know you didn't expect it, I know, because you're not digital. And you're like, why is this guy frying me today? <laughs> but, I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to bring you into 2014 and help you. Anyway, so where was I with this guy? Where was I? Okay, okay. All right, so where was I? They had a marketing meeting. So, so New York. Now, this guy, he fries Kevin Lyles, right? Is that, is that his guy? Uh, he fries, fries him over and over and over, right? Fries him over and over and over. Fam, it's 2014. 
Keb Lowes has Ty Dolla Sign, Trey Songs, Big Sean, and Estelle. Do you think, dummy, that you would have spent a little bit of time and maybe get to know Keb Lowes a little better? You'd be in a better place. You didn't adapt to the game. The game changed. And you're mad at everyone else. Be mad at yourself. Fam, in this whole conversation, I ain't disrespect you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking tough. I'm giving my opinion. Come up here and debate. Debate what? You're out of the music bin. You should, what are we going to debate? What are you going to come up and say? What not to do? You haven't admitted your things to yourself. How are you going to come up on the radio? You're still in dreamland. Candyland. Keep popping tags, right? Is that what he's doing? And you're a cakeaholic. You remember something, though, when you try to, to, the culture vultures made you a cakeaholic and made you whatever it is. Keep it independent. Everybody's independent, stupid. Who's not independent now? Is Chinks independent? Yes or no? Yeah. Troy Ave independent? Yeah. Uh, uh, what, Wiz Khalifa was independent, right? Yeah. Mac Miller is independent. What's the big, big guy that sells? What's the other one? Oh, Macklemore. Oh, Macklemore. He's independent, right? He just got picked up. I don't know if you woke up. I don't know. Because if you want to be in the... Everybody's independent, guy. Everybody's independent. I don't know if you knew that. (laughs) Debate with a guy that has no concept of what's happening. Well, who's the people that used to, was it hip-hop? Hip-hop used to work at Rockefeller. Was it J. Robeson? G. Robeson, sorry, G. Who else? Uh, Al Branch, Lenny S. Yeah. Are they culture vultures? Because they learned what was going on at The Rock and kind of like went on and continued. But they're not, is it? I don't understand. So it's only a color thing. Only if you're not his color, you're a culture vulture. Where are we going with this in 2014? Uh, oh. I burnt. I was excited. <laughs> Take that. On, on Instagram, so thirsty and thirsty for attention. Thirsty to be heard. Thirsty, thirsty. A little bit. Where's my, where's my, where's my, uh, where's my phone? Let me make sure I'm not missing nothing. Let me make sure I got on my. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> um. <clears throat> oh, we got to do a little something? Yeah, a little something. Okay, all right. I was gonna say, I wasn't doing Shout out to my man Tat. Tat's here. Yeah, man. Will's here. <laughs> Triple Thread, he's here. Rel. I'm just getting James Cruz. Shout out to you. I see you, my brother. Yeah. See a lot of people on this. All right. At look, I'm giving you my opinion, New York. At me on Twitter at at Funk Flex. Or is it DJ? at Funk Flex? At me on Instagram at DJ Funk Flex. I mean, I'm here, New York. I'm here. One. You ready, B? Okay. Let's go get him. What up, boy, Jay Z? Hey.